Bruchim Aboim. Um, we finished off our uh, Gematria lectures um, a couple weeks ago with the letter Tuf, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which has a Gematria numerical value of 400. And I mentioned that the Gematria of the words Ayin Ra, which means evil eye, is 400. So does the concept of an evil eye have a place in Judaism? Or is it just superstition? Now we believe that there is the possibility of creating negative, negative energy when one looks at something with envy or ill feelings. The concept of the evil eye is related to the 10th commandment, which is do not covet, no sachmot. Now the first mention of the evil eye in the Torah is mentioned in the Medras concerning the relationship between Sarah, our mother, and Hagar, her Egyptian maidservant. The Medras states that Hagar became pregnant from her first intimate relations with Avram Avinu, and she saw this as a sign that she was at least equal to Sarah, if not greater, and began to treat Sarah with less reverence than she had done previously. Sarah, who had not freed Hagar as her maidservants, took off offense at Hagar's newfound arrogance. She cast an evil eye on her, causing her to miscarry. It was only after Hagar's second pregnancy that she gave birth to her first son, Yishmael. Now we read in Pirkei Avot 4.21, Rabbi Lazar Kapper said that envy, lust, and the pursuit of honor remove a person from the world. We see the trait of envy and lust with Ephron in the book of Bereshit in the portion of Chaye Sarah, 2315, where Ephron sells the cave of the Machpelah to Avram for an exorbitant price of 400 silver shekels, coveting Avram's wealth connected again to the evil eye. Also in the book of Bereshit in the portion of Vayetze, 2935, where some commentaries argue that Leah's fertility was adversely affected when she became subject to the power of the Ayin Hara, of the evil eye for thanking God by allowing her to bear more than one-fourth of Yaakov's sons. Now the Talmud states that the descendants of Yosef are immune to the power of the evil eye. Also the Talmud in Barachot 55b states the one who enters a city and fears the evil eye should interestingly hold the thumb of his right hand in his left hand and the thumb of his left hand in his right and recite the following words, I, the son of so-and-so, putting person's name and his mother's name, come from the descendants of Yosef, over whom the evil eye has no dominion. In addition, in the Talmud and also found in the mission of Brura, it is stated that Jews are urged to perform the ritual of Tashlich, of uh, going to a body of water on Rosh Hashanah, uh, and that body of water should be one that contains fish. And again, we kind of throw our sins as a symbolism into the water. Why? Since fish are incapable of being inf affected by the evil eye. Fish have no eyelids. In the Talmud in Baba Basra 2b, the rabbis say it is prohibited for a person to stand in another person's field and look at his crops while the grain is standing, because he cast an evil eye upon it and thereby causes him damage. Same is true of a garden. Now, many have questioned how is it possible that one person's negative gaze or even thoughts can cause harm to another person or his possessions. God is the epitome of kindness, and as such, he does not usually judge a person in the strictest possible manner. When another person questions another's good fortune, with ill feelings or envy, he is essentially asking, how come that person deserves all his blessings? This brings about a review of the person's merits to see if he truly deserves what he possesses. Now the heavenly court then weighs the sins and merits of that person in question. This can create a negative energy. In fact, our sages tell us that the ayin hara, the evil eye, can also negatively affect the person who gazes it as a friend's good fortune, since the harsh judgment and scrutiny is visited upon both of them, the person who with the ayin hara is on and the person who gives the ayin hara. The sage Rav stated in the Talmud and Baba Basra 107b that many sicknesses are attributed 
to the evil eye. He even contended that when he would enter into a cemetery, he would be able to ascertain that 99 of, out of 100 people died prematurely from causes that stem from the ayin hara, from the evil eye. In Pirkei Avot, it states that anyone who possesses a good eye is a disciple of Abram Avinu, Abraham our father, and anyone who possesses an evil eye is a disciple of Bilam, Harasha, the wicked one. Now the gematria of eye and Ra is 400. The eyes are what we call the windows of the soul. You can touch any part of your body, no problem. When you want to touch your eye, the eye tries not to be touched. It, 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 it tries not to have that happen. Again, because we, think, we feel that it's connected to the soul of a person. And the question is, how do we use that power of the eye, of being the window of the soul? Do we use it for good, or do we use it for bad? So the gematria, the numerical value of ayin is 130. The gematria of the word ra is, uh, is 270. And the gematria of the word tov, good, is 17. I'll see how this plays. Our patriarch Yaakov lived 147 years. When he took his family down to Egypt and to be with Yosef, again his long lost son who was the viceroy, he was at that time 130 years old. Yosef presented his elderly father to Paro, who asked Yaakov how old he was. Yaakov replied he was 130 years old and that his years had been very difficult. However, the last 17 years of Yaakov's life spent in Egypt were good, tov. So Yaakov's 147 years allude to the fact that his first 130 years, gematria of Ayan, may have been difficult, but the last 17, gematria of tov, made everything good. There is a saying that in the end, everything will be good. So if it's not good, it's not the end. On the other hand, the gematria of Ayin Ra, evil eye, is 130 plus 270. The 130 again is the eye that looks at one's life. And the gematria of Ra, 270, is an allusion to the nine months that a baby is in the womb and then birth. So Ra looking at the beginning and not the end, seeing life with questions and uncertainty, a negative approach. Reb Dober, the Maghreb is rich, taught, in truth everything is considered as nothing before God, and there is not true independent existence outside of God. Thus, when you look at something in a positive way, you are also seeing and recognizing how it comes from God Almighty. And since God is the source of all blessings, by doing so you bring forth even more blessings. However, when you gaze upon something with an eye in hurrah, with an evil eye, even if you praise it, but do not recognize that everything comes from God Almighty, you are essentially presenting it as, as if it has its entity of its own, separating it from its divine source and the spiritual power within it. And this can bring about a loss of blessing and even worse. There are those who use their wealth and blessings to flaunt them in front of others who are less fortunate. This can be a cause for concern. However, if one uses those gifts that God has bestowed upon him to help others and live in a manner that is a Kiddush Hashem, a sanctification of God's name, then instead of wealth being a stumbling block, it can be a source of much joy and happiness both in this world and in the world to come. There are those who contend that it is best to live a modest lifestyle and not flaunt wealth or other gifts. As our rabbis tell us, tell us, blessings only rest on that which is hidden from the eye. The Talmud, the Gemara Pesachim 110b, states that one who is not troubled by the eye and hara, the evil eye, will not be affected by it. So to speak, you don't bother it, it won't bother you. So the, also the Talmud in Bab Messiah 30a states that it is forbidden to care for lost property while strangers can see you, lest the evil eye destroy the property. Now the Rambam Maimonides only mentions the second reason given in the Talmud, that the onlookers might steal the object. The Rambam 
directly challenge the notion of an evil eye and other folklore beliefs by minimizing the impacts those beliefs have in legal matters. Now, despite the Rambam's opposition, many popular customs based on the belief of what we call the Ayin Ra, the evil eye, became accepted in Jewish rituals, such as double weddings within families or congregations were avoided to protect those involved in the celebration from noticeable harm. Halakhan seen in Evan Hayezer, 62.3. Based on the concern for the Ayan Hara, we do not count people individually by head. We use a verse that has 10 words, a Shia Samecha. There are different types of words that have 10, 10 different verses that have 10 words in them. Again, when we count a minyan, a form of, of men, or, or count, if we don't do that, we count not one, not two, but not directly one, two, three. Again, it brings upon, we see a curse as we see during the time of David Melech. Also, there's a custom not to call up to the Torah for an aliyah, a father and a son in succession, again, due to the ayin hara. Many women are concerned when barren women look at their children for fear of the ayin hara. There are those who will not tell how many children or grandchildren they have, or the age of an elderly parent, since they are concerned again about the ayin hara. Now, one way that people have accustomed themselves from being affected by statements that they make is they say, "Beli ayin hara," which which translates me without a concern of the evil eye, or in Yiddish, "kanayin hara," again, meaning the same thing. Others who believe in this concept may use am amulets and other remedies as a way to ward off the evil eye. Over the years, Jews have employed numerous superstitious practices believed to ward off the evil eye, such as spitting three times after a vulnerable person's name is mentioned. If one, ca if one can have a negative impact, it's very important, if one can have a negative impact on something or someone, by just gazing with ill feelings. Imagine that one can accomplish by making an effort to always regard things that others have with joy and positive blessings. Again, we see that the difference between a mitzvah and an avera, a mitzvah goes for four generations, a mitzvah for 2,000, a ratio of 500 to one. So again, a person should always think well of others. And again, just like you can affect someone negatively, Again, you can also very much so affect someone positively. So in life we have a choice to view other people and their possessions with positive or negative thoughts and words. May God inspire us and help us to see only good in everyone and everything that we see. And with that trait, may we merit to bring the coming of Mashiach to Kenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much. God bless and be well. Have a